This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Week five is looking like a fun one in the NFL because we start things off on a Sunday morning with a decently fun London game between the Bills and the Jags. We got the 1 p.m. games. The afternoon slate has uh, Chiefs Vikings, Rams Eagles. Both those games are pretty fun. And we wrap things up with Cowboys versus 49ers at the end of the day. It's going to be a fun one. We're going to break down biggest games across Sunday today with Dr. Ed Feng getting his read on those games and his favorite bets over at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Joined here, as mentioned by Dr. Ed Feng. You can find his work at thepowerrank.com and check him out on Twitter at thepowerrankedweek Ed Week 5, looking pretty juicy so far. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty well. Looking forward to another awesome week of uh, NFL football and, uh, you know, catching like four games in my NFL ticket, YouTube TV all at once as, as they all go down to the wire and see how all my bets do. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to another weekend. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun to watch things swing. It's fun when it goes well. Um, right. I haven't had one of those like disaster slates where things are going well. And then the in the as Scott Hansen calls the witching hour, they all go askew. So I haven't had that yet, which right. might mean that I'm due. But uh, we'll see how things play out for this week. But yeah, it's been it's been fun so far. And I think that especially having good games in the afternoon will make Sunday even more fun. There's also F1 on Sunday. There is NASCAR, a cutoff race on Sunday, WNBA finals, game one, MLB playoffs. So Sunday is going to be a true treat across the board. We're going to dig into the Sunday NFL games here on the show in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Our preview of Thursday Night Football with Tom Vecchio is already posted. Tom broke down props for the Bears and Commanders. Tom will also be with you on Saturday morning talking about that 49ers Cowboys game from a prop betting perspective to get all the primetime Tom shows along with these the regular episodes you can find them in the covering the spread podcast feed the Monday through Thursday Monday through Friday shows are also up on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV plus snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel America's number one sports book right now new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet that is $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There is a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, totals, and more. So visit FanDuel.com and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports waging in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona. 1-888-789-7777. Or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana. 1-800-522-4700. Visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia. Call 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org. Or call 800 327 for 24 7 support in Massachusetts, or call 1 877 8 Hope and Y, or text Hope and Y in New York. Now, before we dig into Sunday's games, Ed, I do want to talk to you about a fun thing you've been talking about in passing here on the show, talking about betting interception props over at FanDuel Sports, but we haven't really talked about the overall process you use to bet those yet. So when you're placing those interception bets uh, each week, what process do you go through to place those? Right. So it all goes back to some of the work that I did, I guess, during the pandemic. Uh, I asked the question, how can you better predict interceptions? When you take interception rate and you look at how predictive it is, how sticky it is from season to season, it, it's really not. And what I ended up finding out that offseason was that when you look at a bigger set of events, 
uh, you can actually do much better. So I look at the set of events uh, that includes interceptions, but also includes, includes passes defended. This is all tracked in the NFL play-by-play. Passes defended is any time a defender gets a hand on the ball. Could be at the line of scrimmage. Could be a defender in coverage. Uh, and then also whenever a defender jars the ball loose, it's also considered a pass defended. Um, so essentially, interceptions and uh, passes defended are essentially every time a quarterback puts the ball uh, into a dangerous situation. And so I quantify that by bad ball rate, simply interceptions plus passes defended divided by pass attempts. And I found that to be about as sticky as any quarterback statistic gets. So that's essentially what I'm using. Um, you can kind of use that to see players like Daniel Jones, who had an incredible uh, interception rate last year. He had about a 1.1% interception rate, same as Jalen Hurts. And you, you don't actually need bad ball rate analysis to just say that's completely unsustainable, even for Patrick Mahomes, who's actually been pretty bad this year. Uh, but that should regress. So, you know, Daniel Jones has been NFL average um, over the last couple of seasons. Uh, and I think it's actually a thing where, you know, he got better before Dable got there. Uh, his bad ball rate got significantly better. And then it was about the same last year when Dable came on, but his interception rate plummeted. That was unsustainable. So I made a big to do about, Oh, Daniel Jones is going to regress. That so far has looked pretty good. And, you know, we've talked about this analysis before. I had Carson Wentz regressing a couple years ago, and he was awful. Um, and now I'm basically applying that to interceptions per game. And the market is always set at a half interception, and then the price determines the, uh, you know, the whether it's going to go over or under. Uh, I'm even a little surprised that a lot of the bets end up going over a half interception. Uh, it seems like the markets are... Interceptions have gone down over the years, and the markets uh, seem to expect it more possibly than it should. I'm really surprised it's been so one way. Uh, the only under I've had all year was Zach Wilson. Three through, I don't know how many. So Zach Wilson against the it was Pats. three picks against the Cowboys. I think all in the fourth quarter, the week before you recommended yeah. that one, right? And so the price was absurd. I forget what it was. It was absurd. I think it was plus um, 130 and, you know, somewhere in there. I think you said. No, I think it was plus 150. Was it? Okay. <laughs> yeah, like something, you know, I mean, look, it's Zach Wilson. He's more likely to throw a pick than not. Right. It, it's just all how uh, the price plays out. Um, you know, I had a lot of a uh, couple weeks going, uh, had bets on Baker Mayfield to throw a pick. And then he's thrown a bunch and then the price changes and, you know, no more value last week, which made me very, very sad. Um, and so anyways, it's been going pretty well. I, I give this out to members of my site. Um, and uh, so now I've been looking at, well, so, uh, you know, for example, like I, at, at first I only trusted quarterbacks, which I had a lot of statistics on. Right. Yeah. So guys that have been starters for the last three years, you're looking at thousands of pass attempts and, you know, we, we know how good they are um, at keeping the ball out of dangerous positions. Uh, so I'm getting a little bit more aggressive with it and looking at some of the, some, some of the players that perhaps don't have as many pass attempts. So tonight, Sam Howell is actually pretty interesting. We don't have a ton of pass attempts on him. And, you know, the NFL average is like 11.6% is an NFL average bad ball rate. I think he's somewhere in like 13.2%. And who knows? You know, he might be that bad. Um, I mean, that's like Justin Fields territory. So he may be that bad at uh, at uh, throwing the football. And he, you know, which would suggest he's very likely to throw a pick. You know, I don't do that. I, what I'll do is I say, okay, well, let's just assume he's NFL average. Take pass attempts in the market. Figure out what the, the price should be. And I believe it was just slightly, if you assume he's NFL average at uh, throwing interceptions that, you know, it'd be like 51%. So uh, in essence, like it's a slight lean because you can get like plus 100 plus one, 105 or something on him to throw a pick tonight on Washington. So it's a lean. A lot of, a lot of the, you know, the bets that I have been making have been much bigger edge than that. Um, but definitely lean on how tonight I had a lean on Jared Goff last week, last Thursday ended up winning. So it's kind of nice. Um, but yeah, that's basically my process, you know, just like looking at underlying metrics and, um, 
one of the big goals this year was to to get into props and and the most obvious thing was interceptions because I've done so much right. work already on it and and can really quantify it. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we'll be getting into other things. But but interceptions has been fun and it's like you know whenever you have the over, it's also nice too because once you throw an over, once you throw the pick, you're like okay, whoop, right. next game, which is pretty great. Right. Well, I think that um, it's interesting too to talk about how that number specifically is going to be pretty predictive for quarterbacks because to me, when I hear that, it implies it might stabilize pretty quickly. So do you, could you see yourself getting into betting these kind of props for like, like CJ Stroud later on this year, or are you going to want more data before diving in on rookies who don't have that, that, that track record of bad ball data? Well, I mean, I make assumptions like it, like I was talking about with how like mm -hmm. uh, Desmond Ritter uh, yeah. heading into last week had one career interception and maybe 200 pass attempts. Right. So his interception rate is looking great, um, but that really affects the markets. Right. Like his price was uh, plus 154 to throw a pick. Yeah. And, you know, my argument was like to get to that price he has to be Patrick Mahomes. Right. <laughs> which, which he's most likely not. And so like, that was one that I liked. That was one that I had in my, in, fi in five nuggets Saturday. Um, so yeah, so I'm not, I'm, yeah, I'm getting a little bit more aggressive in looking at some of these uh, kids that don't have as many pass attempts. You just make assumptions, right? Like most yeah. of these kids have really bad, bad ball rates, which is not, which is, expected right so right. let's you know what happens what happens when we assume they're average what happens when they assume that we're we're patrick mahomes uh like and then we get a sense for if if the market's off on it with the howell one uh right now he is even money to go over a half pick that actually does mesh with like his play style. Uh, Nate Tice of the athletic described him as like a three true outcomes quarterback where it's a touchdown. It's a sack or a pick. Like those are like the only three things that can happen on the same Howell drop back. Cause like he has some impressive throws and like he actually right. can light it up, but yeah. also like he does put the ball in harm's way. It's not just like right. bad ball data saying that like that he's a film guy and he says the same thing. So I think like if the numbers early say he has a high bad ball rate, if your numbers say, implied odds of 51 percent assuming he's like neutral we could probably assume he's a bit above that then even money sounds kind of good i yeah i i will probably bet that before tonight yeah. just okay. to have something fun tonight um but yeah i think that is right um i had a bet on jalen hurts to throw a pick last week it, he didn't but it was a situation where not only like the bad balls didn't look particularly bad but you right. felt like he was throwing deep and trying to force the ball to aj brown there was right. a couple of plays in which he was trying to go to AJ Brown and the defender was way closer to the ball than AJ Brown. But then was. AJ Brown is AJ Brown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. AJ, which is fine. You understand. But you can't that, bet on right? that happening every single time long term, right? Right. Yeah. Right. So, yes. So you certainly find quarterbacks that I believe are just kind of bet ons as long as the numbers are remotely close to it. Right. So I've talked about a couple. Unfortunately, Baker Mayfield's kind of out of that range right now. We'll see whatever the price is, but but Hertz is definitely definitely a quarterback I'm looking at. Like like what I saw last week definitely supports like okay, it didn't win, but right. I'm still looking at I'm, I will be looking at it this week. Deep balls are good, but they're also good for interception props. Yeah, like that's, exactly, that's exactly. And, when, and especially when you're throwing deep balls and you're kind of forcing them. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't blame them. I do the same thing, but that do, that does mean there's probably value in the over on interception props there. Birds. Okay, so fun discussion there, and I'm sure we'll talk more about interception props as the year goes along. Let's talk, though, about that London game we referenced earlier on. We've got the Jags taking on the Bills. Right now, the Bills are five-and-a-half-point favorites at FanDuel Sportsbook. Total in this game is 48-and-a-half, and Ed, the Bills have lit the world on fire the past three games. So the question here is, can the Jags keep things close enough to cover on a neutral site in London? Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, my numbers certainly think they can. I'm putting this closer to four. Uh, I actually think that might be a little bit of, of an overestimate. I think that Jacksonville has the better travel situation this week. They've been in London the whole week, yes. They've been in London the whole week. So Buffalo is making like the, I mean, I hate flying to Europe personally. Like, I, I hate it. So they're making that trip the wrong way uh, across the ocean. And um, so... Yeah, I think there's 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 a lot to unpack here. I mean, I think Jacksonville, their offense kind of looks the same as last year, which is good. Top 10 offense, Trevor Lawrence. Um, and 
I haven't really uh, thought too much of their defense, but in my numbers, they have improved from last season. They were 26 last season in my adjusted passing success rate. Uh, they are 16th or, or somewhere near NFL average this year. And I think with that offense, if you get an NFL average defense, like that's a good thing. Um, their PFF coverage grades are really good. Uh, looks like Darius Williams and um, Tyson Campbell are leaders in the secondary. Uh, I'm, I'm a little hesitant to say just simply because, uh, you know, de defensive performance tends to be more volatile than offense and uh, Josh Allen and company could certainly light them up. But I, I do think they are better on that side of the ball. So I do have some uh, uh, I, I do think Jacksonville is pretty good. I, I would lean towards them in the game, um, but I actually have a better Jacksonville bet that I'll tell you about a little bit later. Um, you know, Buffalo, uh, looks like a Super Bowl contender. It, it almost looks like they've forgotten about how they pissed that first game away against the Jets. Not that I'm still angry about that, but, um, you know, they look good on both sides of the ball. You definitely worry that Tredavious White is out with the Achilles tear, which is awful, but I think they do get Von Miller back one of these days. So yeah. that, that will certainly help. They, they do look like Super Bowl contenders. Um, but I would, I would lean Jacksonville here. Yeah, so Von Miller practicing this week. Not sure if he'll play, but then also on the Jag side, Cam Robinson, their left tackle, is back off a four-game suspension for PEDs. So they get him back. Their offensive line has been kind of like a weak point. They've also had like a lot of weird drops. So you mentioned how the offense looked good. I think that they could be undersold by the numbers a bit too, especially when you account for Robinson being back. So um, I've got this right about five and a half, but I think that if I were to think that one side were being underestimated i would say it'd probably be more so jacksonville than buffalo for the factors mentioned there let's shift now to the afternoon slay and talk about the eagles at the rams pretty fun game i think once again here with the eagles four and a half point favorites at fanduel sportsbook total in this game is 49 and a half and the eagles ed have looked a bit vulnerable at times this year they're now facing a pretty feisty rams team on the road so how do you see this game playing out Right. I, I really don't know. Uh, you know, I, I'm really surprised that we're sitting at week five in the season and my numbers are showing value on the Eagles. I have them by almost six in this game. Look, the Eagles were supposed to be uh, one of those favorite type teams that the market was give the benefit of the doubt, maybe add a point or two, the type of team that I would never expect to see value on with my numbers. But as you mentioned, they've struggled. Um, you know, really, uh, they don't look as good on defense. They're 27th in my adjusted passing success rate. Avante Maddox, the cornerback, is out. Uh, some of the other cornerbacks, their grades don't look, their PFF cover grades don't look as good as previous years. They've got that Job kid that's playing and doesn't particularly look good in the secondary. Um, and then the Rams were supposed to suck. Right. Like, so, you know, uh, with Cooper Cup not playing and and no one expected anything of this Rams team that was, you know, you know, the kind of conventional argument was as Matthew Stafford and Aaron Donald and very thin beyond that. But uh, they've actually been really good um, when I look at all my adjusted quantities and put them together to get a sense of how teams have performed over four weeks. They're actually fourth in the NFL, which is kind of unbelievable. Uh, just a side note, the Arizona Cardinals were definitively supposed to be the worst team in the NFL. Uh, they're actually 12th yeah. in by those, by those rankings, which is, you know, a miracle. So I don't really know what to make of either Philadelphia or the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, I mean, I guess I would lean Philly, but I'm, I honestly have no desire to bet this at all. Um, I, I think there's these, these are two teams that I think I personally need a little, few more weeks to figure out. So stay away from me. Yeah, I, I did wind up taking the Rams earlier on this week. Um, I'm not I'm kind of assuming Cooper Cup will not play, honestly, just because like it sounds like the hamstring, you know, he was limited practice Wednesday. I think he's a lot more banged up than Jonathan Taylor was. So I, I'm not sure if he'll play necessarily. So I'm not really accounting for him, but I don't know. I, I maybe I've just been like kind of swept up in how Matthew Stafford has looked, but he did get banged up towards the end of last week's game. That could be a downside uh, for them, but I I don't know. I, it's more so about I'm high on the Eagles or sorry, high on the Rams and being low on the Eagles. I think the Eagles will be fine. Um, I think they're kind of in the same spot that the bills were in after week one, where it's like, Oh, we could panic if we wanted to, but why should we? We've seen these, this team 
with the same personnel on offense be very good. So yeah, they might get more push from the opposing side because the defense is struggling, but I still have faith that Hurts can figure it out, that this offense can figure it out. I just think that the Rams are a bit undersold by this number. So interesting. I would push I think, back a little bit on the yeah. Eagles offense. Like they were good last year, yeah. but I don't know if that set of players has the same track record that that Buffalo offense has. That's true. Um, so, and, and I ex- actually expect a lot of regression on, for the Eagles on offense and especially in a lot of Hertz's his numbers. We've yeah. kind of seen that, you know, we'll see if it persists. I'm yeah. not sure. Um, but I think there's more reason to doubt them than a yeah. team like Buffalo. Yeah. I think that's probably fair too. I expected their defense to regress this year. Cause they lost a lot of, like, I know that they brought in Jalen Carter, uh, stuff like that, right. but like they lost a lot of important guys on that defense too. So the defense yeah. Co- not collapsing, but like struggling is not a huge surprise to me, but um, I don't know. I, I guess we'll see how that plays out. They also have a new play caller, uh, which could impact right. things on the offensive right. side too, to get, you know, ramped up with that. Let's finish uh, up here by well, talking about the Sunday night game. That is the Cowboys going to uh, Santa Clara to take on the 49ers right now. The 49ers are three and a half point favorites. Total in this game is 45 and Ed, 49ers have been unstoppable so far this year, but they've gone against largely inferior teams. That's a good thing to beat up on bad teams, but can they carry that over now to this game with the Cowboys? Yeah, we'll see. I mean, there's certainly going to be regression in what's going on in San Francisco. They they're not possibly going to continue to be this good. Um, My numbers have this, you know, San Francisco by four. So not really seeing any value on either side. I do definitively believe that these are the two best teams in the NFC. And, uh, you know, we could see them in the NFC championship game to play in the Super Bowl. I just think it's an awesome matchup. I'm so happy that it is uh, the Sunday night game. And, uh, you know, it's not a primetime game in which I have to see Aiden O'Connell maybe go out there and (laughs) – Man, that was bad last week. And we might see him again on Monday night, which I'm not looking forward to. What I am looking forward to is, is these two teams. Uh, you know, look, if I showed you all my numbers, if I if I, I guess I don't want to regurgitate all my numbers that say these two teams are great. These two right. teams are great. There, there's nothing there, there, you know, it, let's just enjoy this game. I think it's gonna be a great game. Hopefully, we'll get a close one uh going down to the wire and we'll see some great football. Yeah, I did take the 49ers money line earlier on. That has since moved. Um it's minus 186 now. I got it a bit ago because it's I don't show as much value anymore. But I thought there was value then in large part because I was expecting the Cowboys offensive line to still be banged up. But now it looks like they might have all their dudes. Uh, so that'd be a big boost for this Cowboys offense. So with where the market stands right now, I think it's a stay away. I do agree with you, too, that these are the best two teams in the NFC. Let me see here, actually. Um, based on current health, I have San Francisco one. Dallas two. Ah, oh, that's scary. You have Detroit three, but what could go wrong there? And then Philly four. Ah, oh, that's scary. I did take, I did lay the points in Detroit when it was eight and a half too. So, um, Oh yeah. 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 I mean, that, I mean, that's, that's also like, I mean, I, I'm kind of having to eat some crow on Detroit. Like I kind of doubted the offense and the offense has been pretty good. So, um, and the defense, yeah. I don't think I don't think they're good, but they've been better than I thought they'd be. Like they've they've benefited from facing some pretty bad offenses, I think, outside right. of week one. Um, so I don't think they're like good, but even even with that accounted for, I think they're at least better than expectations on that side of the ball, too. Yeah, and I think they have potential to be even better. I don't know if Cam Sutton's been great, but he certainly upgraded over who they were throwing out last year. I don't know if Emmanuel Mosley's played, but yeah. if he ever plays that would certainly help, right? Like they actually invested in the secondary, which has yeah. really been the the worst unit for that team for years. So yeah, I don't know. It's 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 a weird world in which uh the markets and numbers trust the Detroit Lions. Like they were like the public team coming into this year, like, oh, everyone's overhyping the Lions, like, right. oh, we got a backpedal on Lions. Like, no, they were good. They're just a good team. Like it was as simple as that. Um, I get the inclination to fade uh where the sentiment is going, but Jared Goff's too good, man. Best quarterback in football. Now, Ed, earlier on, you alluded to a Jaguars bet you like. I'm assuming that's in the futures market. What are you seeing over there? Yeah, so uh, I have my member numbers, and uh, I've been using the simulator over at Unabated. And the basic idea here is, look, betting on NFL sides is hard. 
why not look towards the futures market to see if we can get more value? And I put my numbers in to the simulator. And actually, if, if you sign up for Unabated this week, you can actually get my member numbers in straight into the simulators, one click. Uh, they usually, most weeks have my public numbers, which are points based, um, but they have my member numbers this week. So uh, I simulated it out and it, you know, it was showing a lot of value for Jacksonville. And the reason is really simple. Like they are a good football team. My numbers have them 10th in the NFL right now. And their uh, opponents in the uh, division are not as good. I believe I have them 26th, 27th, and 28th, exactly in the order that you, you show there. Um, Indianapolis and Houston are actually better than expected this preseason. Uh, I, I've actually been thinking back to Indianapolis and looking into them, and they were 30th in my preseason numbers, like bottom three type team. I think that was unfair. Uh, even if you doubted Anthony Richardson, uh, I think it was a little unfair given when you look at what happened with that team last year. Um, so both those teams are better, but they're still, I mean, certainly bottom 10 teams in the NFL. I think Tennessee is certainly a bottom 10 team as well. There's just a wide gap there. So uh, I put the fair price of Jacksonville to win the division closer to 50-50. I think there's a lot of value in plus 150 here. Uh, I would go and uh, bet that right now. Yeah, as you mentioned, plus 150 for Jacksonville to win the AFC South over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Earlier on this week when I was looking at this market, uh, Tennessee was, I think, plus 190. They've linked into plus 210, most likely going towards the Colts. The Colts were 5-1. to one. They're now down to plus 430. So it's very odd to see... The incongruity, oh, right. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right word. It's very weird yeah. to see the market shift towards Tennessee this week right. against Indianapolis, but then have Indianapolis's division odds shorten here. So like right. something's not right between one of right. those two. But that's an opportunity to bet it. Right. So, um, right. I mean, you know, I think Anthony Richardson has been pretty good. And yeah. I think a lot of the people that uh, watch these games a lot more closely than I have have been pretty impressed with how he was done. And I just want to shout out uh, Matt Waldman, who is a fantasy football, kind of a tape grinder for college. Yeah. Uh, he has his rookie scouting portfolio. He was on my podcast in April, just raving about Anthony Richardson. He was his number one quarterback. And uh, I remember him saying that he has an elite mind. He's an elite learner. Uh, which is why I really liked him. He saw a lot of improvement in his play over the course of Florida, and he saw a lot of things on tape that he simply didn't see a lot before. I think we're all seeing that in the NFL right now. That doesn't mean he's going to go out and kill it against Tennessee this week, but the the potential is there, and I think the potential is there for him to be better earlier than a lot of people expect. Uh, so um, anyways, props to Matt Waldman, so you should definitely follow his stuff. If you look like opponent adjusted numbers well, through a very, very small sample, both Anthony Richardson and CJ Stroud have been like above league average um, right. for which this year, which is very amazing impressive. for the rookie. Yeah. Yeah. And especially for like Richardson, where the expectation was like year one would be a wash and you'd be kind of be making more of a long term investment. Um, right. I think both those guys have been awesome. Um, right. I think that honestly, like the AFC South is a fun division when you have Trevor Lawrence, Anthony Richardson, CJ Stroud. That's a banger lineup. We will not discuss the fourth team because their quarterback situation is a GD nightmare, but the other three teams are pretty fun. Yeah, they, they are pretty fun. I mean, you know, like CJ Stroud got almost 200 yards to Nico Collins last week. It's, yeah. it's wild. That was his second wild. game above 130, I think, this year. Nico Collins, like, shredding, which I'm sure that, like, is that confusing to you or is that not a surprise? Because I feel like he always had this promise in college of like being that kind of guy. I just never really lived up to it, whether it yeah. be circumstances around him or whatever it was. He certainly had that promise in college. Uh, so in some sense, I'm not surprised. But I guess I'm a little surprised that Stroud's doing this well, just given the um, the expectations we had of the receivers yeah. that he's working with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so in that sense, I'm surprised. Yeah. Uh, but Nico Collins balling out. So good to see that for uh, Ann Arbor people as always. That is all that we have here for this week on covering this or for today here on covering the spread back once again, tomorrow, we're going to talk about NFL week five player props, but also divisional round previews with Rob Friedman pitching ninja, picking his brain on the pitching staffs involved 
in the next round of the MLB playoffs. To get that as it is posted, make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts, and check us out on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV+. Plus. Ed, you've talked about your member numbers, talked about bad ball rate and stuff like that. If people want to find those numbers and dig in a bit more, where can they go to do so? Uh, well, I apologize. I put the bad ball numbers behind my paywall. Um, so you if should. you want that, you're going to have to you sign should. up for a membership uh, on my site. Uh, but if you want to just kind of ch- check things out, uh, I signed up for five. Sorry, sign up for my email newsletter. I send out five nugget Saturday uh, and I'll give you a taste for my analysis for these QB props. Uh, the Ritter prop over a half was was in there last Saturday and um There'll probably be another one in there this Saturday, but it's not just my stuff. It's also other people's uh, bets. Jim's bets have been in there. Uh, so check that out at thepowerrank.com. Also had uh, Fabian Zuma on to talk NFL this week on the Football Analytics Show. He's an awesome guest. Uh, definitely. We, we went through a lot of teams in depth, which was pretty fun. Uh, it was great to kind of get his insights. Uh, he He's a quantitative guy, but like kind of much different from the way I approach things. So it was it was really good conversation. My podcast is the Football Analytics Show. You can catch that wherever you get your podcasts. Love Fabian. Uh, so I'll check that out. Uh, the Football Analytics Show to check out that. And to get Ed's numbers, go to thepowerrank.com. You can follow Ed on Twitter at the Power Rank. Don't forget that our college football week six preview is already up on the Covering the Spread podcast feed, the FanDuel YouTube page, and FanDuel TV+. Plus. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow FanDuel Research at FanDuel Research. Enjoy Bears versus Commanders for tonight. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow. This has been Covering the Spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast. Cast Network.